Thanks very much to uh, Her Excellency Henrietta Ford there, to Rachel and to all the speakers we've heard over the past 90 minutes in which I think we've all got a very good sense of the urgency of ending child labor, how to do it and how to escalate our work and stop denying children their childhoods. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us, hello and welcome to Leaders Summit 2021, hosted by the United Nations Global Compact. I hope that you've enjoyed the event so far. My name is Veronica Pedroza, and I'm honored to be your host and MC for the next five and a half hours. Throughout the event, you've heard insights from the UN Global Compact's new global strategy and ambitions to promote the 2030 agenda among business. Well, you can read the full strategy and learn more about the global programming by visiting the UN Global Booth in the Hopin Pavilion. First off, while the main stage conversations will be held in English, I just want to let you know or remind you that all the plenary sessions are being translated into both Spanish and Mandarin, and they are easily accessible. All you have to do is stay on the plenary stage and you'll see on the right hand side, next to the chat and polls, a kind of translations tab. You have to click on that and just hit um, my session, choose either Spanish, or Portuguese or Mandarin. And then you can mute the live video in hop in and you will hear your selected language. With, um, with so many people online today, we're encouraging everyone to join the conversation in the event chat that I mentioned a little bit earlier on the right hand side. And um, then you can connect directly with attendees using the networking and people features here on Hopin. And you can keep the conversation going, of course, on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn using the hashtags Leaders Summit. Tweet your questions and comments and let us know what you think about the event. I'll be checking in on your tweets throughout the program. Now to proceed with today's affairs. Cross-sectoral collaboration is one of the defining concepts of international development in the 21st century. The UN 2030 agenda represents a fundamental shift in thinking explicitly acknowledging the interconnectedness of prosperous business, a thriving society, and a healthy environment. The achievement of the agenda requires an unprecedented level of cooperation and collaboration among all the stakeholders, namely business, government, civil society and foundations. This next session will shed light on efforts made by change makers, as well as on pioneering approaches that leverage the global goals to build innovative and experimental partnerships, the session will also present challenges hindering partnerships in the region so we can all think deeply about this. The discussion will be informed by the targets under SDG goal 17. That's diving into the following five categories, finance, technology, capacity building, trade systemic issues, that's to say policy and institutional coherence, multi-stakeholder partnerships, data, monitoring, and accountability. Without further ado, let me introduce Grace Najjar. She's Managing Director of PMI for the Middle East and North Africa to host this session. Grace, thank you, and over to you. Welcome, everyone. My name is Grace Najjar, the Managing Director of the Project Management Institute, MENA. It is my pleasure to moderate the session today of the UN Global Compacts Leaders Summit on creating value through partnership. The cross-sectoral collaboration is one of the defining concepts of international development in the 21st century. The UN 2030 Agenda represents a fundamental shift in thinking, explicitly acknowledging the interconnectedness of prosperous business, a thriving society, and a healthy environment where unprecedented level of cooperation and collaboration among all stakeholders are needed to achieve this agenda. 
In particular, in the Middle East, public-private collaboration is highly favored as governments seek to enable the private sector to play a greater role and effectively contribute to accelerating the economic growth through envisioning the future, one that is independent of oil, and through their strategic goals in building capacities that will contribute towards a thriving society. Equally, at PMI, we recognize the importance of expanding our mission and build coalition with other leading associations to empower change makers through capacity building for an integrated social impact and consistent value. The session today will shed light on efforts made by change makers, as well as pioneering approaches that leverage the global goals in specific SDG goal number 17, diving into five categories, namely finance, technology, capacity building, trade, and systemic issues. I am delighted to be joined today by our panel of experts, Robin Risha, a general manager of Arconciel, a Lebanese-based nonprofit organization. Sina Habous, executive director of the Regional Center for Sustainable Finance, MENA and Africa region. Mazen Wadaifi, CEO of the Amman Stock Exchange. Richard Sundarji, CEO of Societe Generale Middle East. I would like to start with you first, Robin and Sina. We all understand the power of partnership and the impact they can have in bringing a collective solution to complex problems. How do you think government and civil society can leverage capacity building to institutionalize public-private partnership in a country or a region? Robin. Yes, um, hello everybody. Uh, our experience in our council as a social enterprise, we act as a social enterprise in an environment where there is no legal uh, form of social enterprise. So we are an organization, a social organization. We are were funded in 85. Our mission is to participate in sustainable development, serving uh, all people in difficulty. Since inception, its inception, our council has worked as a social enterprise because there is uh, no law as mentioned, but with the aim of ensuring the sustainability uh, in order to have a permanent response to the needs. This positioning has allowed us to develop trust with the environment, with the donors, with other actors on the field, and above all, uh, to be able to capitalize on our experience in order to share it with other actors. Establishing effective and inclusive partnerships takes time, and it's important to create the right framework from the start and review the structure and process of the partnership on an ongoing basis to measure its success or failure. Partnership implies a shared leadership, shared can do values and mission and understanding. If a partnership is going to succeed in the area of communication, strong feedback loops are required, effective communication at all levels within the partnership and within partner organization, sharing and accessing all knowledge and information needs to exist. Uh, from a community development perspective, the test to determine if these partnerships are effective, uh, they, are, and they are actually contributing to what will empower people for social and economic change, we have to go through the different experiences. Our council has assisted local NGOs through capacity buildings, through projects and referrals. And this helped us and, uh, as our council and other organizations to improve our skills and to identify tools in our jobs uh, simultaneously. During the course of these partnerships, our organization often evolve as they learn more about effective management, building capacity and not duplicating the resources and gain valuable experiences 
in that sense, partnerships, partnerships act as learning mechanisms that teach us and teach everybody to be better at what you do and enable you to achieve your goals. It was on a local level, at a regional uh, and international level. Partnerships has grown since the early days of Arc-en-Ciel. Throughout many projects implemented in Syria, Jordan, Egypt, even in France and Europe, Arc-en-Ciel has also cooperated with the public sector in Lebanon through several ministries, Ministry of Health, Social Affairs, Affairs, Environment, and we did propose throughout this partnership a project of law, for example, in, 2000, uh, in the year 2000, to ensure the rights of people with disabilities and providing technical assistance and services to around 70% of this population. And it was shared throughout our experience with other countries in the region, Egypt, Jordan, uh, and uh, uh, Syria. And moreover, Arc-en-Ciel has established on another level partnership with academic institutions to develop and implement, implement innovative projects and conduct R&D. While we have our own R&D, we can use the universities. And we are leading today with the first biopesticide uh, factory in the region. Uh, doing and uh, uh, processing biopesticides, especially in this, especially in this uh, critical period in Lebanon. Also, Arc-en-Ciel is a member of CUT. CUT is a Lebanon agro-food uh, innovative uh, cluster uh, between the private sector, the public sector, and the social uh, society. We are promoting the Lebanese agri-food to new heights of sustainable prosperity and innovation, again, especially needed nowadays in Lebanon. As for ch challenges, we have definitely faced challenges when trying to strengthen the local partnership, in addition to few internal weaknesses that we try to improve in the internal structure and governance of our council. To end up, lesson learned, uh, lessons learned can be resumed in six steps. You have to start internally by reinforcing the association mission in the culture and professionalizing the resources within an accountable system, having a proper governance, share experiences through sharing capitalized success stories, avoid resources duplication, and enforce local partnership in order to be able to succeed regionally and internationally. Thank you, Robin. Sina, I would like to hear your thoughts on that, please. Sina, could you hear me? I think I can address the question to Mazen. It's similar question, how can we leverage capacity building to support the private sector of all sizes? And I can turn it over to Sina whenever your mic is ready. So Mazen, uh, how can we leverage capacity building to support the private sector, again, to size and build uh, the impactful partnership alongside multi-stakeholders? And whenever Sina is ready, I'm happy to have you both speaking. I am ready. <laughs> ah, great, Sina. Okay, so let's uh, hear from you on uh, civil society and government's perspective, and then Mazin, I'm going to turn it over to you. So I guess I'll be talking about the government perspective, uh, the administrative yes. public sector perspective, and I think it's a very interesting point of view, uh, at least from, from uh, the, the institution that we present. Uh, FRA uh, supervises the non-banking financial market in Egypt, which is a huge market. And one of the major uh, uh, goals that we have is to introduce a gradual change towards a sustainable finance market, which means, of course, uh, uh, adopting practices of institutionalizing sustainability on different levels of uh, private sector institutions and companies. Accordingly, the challenge was uh, to change the perceptions of what a government or a public sector institution could do 
to support sustainability. And the key was, of course, partnership. Uh, partnerships played, uh, as I said, a, a very important major role, first of all, in helping us achieve what we were set to do as a public institution, uh, redefine what the government can do, not only as imposing regulations, but giving feedback, uh, listening, creating dialogue, uh, uh, having a two-way uh, uh, partnership with the private sector, which was very important for us to take on as a role, and partner partnership helped us to do that. It also helped us to leverage and balance between incoming international trends in sustainability, whether in sustainable finance or different practices, and how can we adapt it to local requirements and needs, whether in Egypt or in the MENA region. Through different partnerships, we were able to acquire knowledge, have access to knowledge through international partners, through international uh, institutions that, that put sets and uh, trends and even initiate standards very much needed to empower and regulate and to provide uh, a private sector that we supervise with the necessary tools and information to help them adopt in a more easy, easy way sustainability. Accordingly, it is, how can I say, it's, it's not only vital, but it's how you manage partnership is what makes it very important. I consider it to be strategic. Uh, it is the key, uh, you can have knowledge, you can have uh, power, you can have re regulatory power. But if you want to manage uh, resistance to change, introducing new uh, ideology, ideas, without much resistance, you, you need to be, be smart about uh, tactical partnerships, regional, local uh, partnerships, and uh, hearing back from experts. Uh, all of this would not have been ha happening, at least in our case, have it, have it not been through uh, partnerships, in short. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Mazin, over to you, please. You're welcome. Uh, you're on mute, Mazin. Thank you, Grace. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Well, first of all, I would like to thank you very much for having me in this session. And, uh, uh, and, and I also would like to say that in this rapidly changing global uh, economies and environment, which is heavily affected by, by the pandemic COVID-19 and the challenges and the repercussions resulted from this pandemic, I think partnership uh, uh, between a government, private, and public uh, uh, institution and bodies is so essential to bring our goals to uh, achievement. Achieving a successful partnership and uh, a capacity building, uh, I think the main drivers of uh, achieving a successful partnership and uh, a capacity building is knowledge sharing, and cooperation focusing on common goals and clear understanding uh, of mutual benefits uh, 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 of this partnership and, and capacity building, uh, as well as sharing accountability and risk management, taking into account uh, the responsibilities and the roles of each partner and, uh, and, and, and each stakeholder in this uh, uh, process. Uh, uh, we at the Amman Stock Exchange have created a strong multi, uh, multi stakeholders partnership uh, uh, with our stakeholders, mainly our listed companies here at the Stock Exchange. Uh, they are our main stakeholder and partner uh, in building capacity building. Uh, also, we have built strong partnership, strong multi stakeholders partnership with international institutions, such as the UNDP, uh, the, the, the Jordanian chapter of, uh, of UN Global uh, 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 Compact. Uh, and I would like to uh, take this opportunity to, to express my sincere thanks and, co thanks and, and appreciation for their uh, cooperation with the, with the Amman Stock Exchange in building capacity building. Uh, also UN Women, uh, to, to, with the aim to establish a sustainable approach and, uh, and culture. 
Uh, we here at the Amman Stock Exchange have joined uh, the UN Sustainable Stock Exchange Initiative. Uh, we have uh, issued uh, publications. Uh, we have, uh, in, in order to educate, to enhance the awareness of sustainability and ESG principles and standards. Uh, we have held uh, uh, training uh, courses here with the cooperation of uh, uh, UN Global Compact with our uh, employees and departments. Uh, and this is a step towards uh, uh, familiar training and familiarizing uh, uh, our uh, main stakeholders, uh, the, the listed companies with the sustainability. Uh, we have issued guidance for listed companies uh, to familiarize them, to educate them about the, uh, the, the, the benefits of sustainability, uh, about the, uh, the, the international principles and practices of sustainability. Uh, we are planning, an, uh, uh, according to our strategic plan, uh, to, to hold training courses for uh, uh, the, 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 the stock, uh, the, the shareholding companies in order or also to train them uh, 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 about uh, the, the, the standards, to educate them, to, uh, to, to let them be aware of the standards of sustainability. Uh, we are working together with our partners in order to build this capacity building and, 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 and with, uh, with our partners and uh, uh, we hope that we'll achieve uh, our goals uh, as we uh, as we planning. Thanks, you. Thank you, Mazen. Richard, thank you. please, your thought on that too. Yes, thank you, Grace, and thank you for for having me. Um, well, uh, let me start perhaps a bit broadly. Uh, needless to say that uh, achieving this set of ambitious goals, which are the the SDGs, is a, is a very complex task uh, to say the least, and it requires uh, holistic solutions. Um, and uh, which in turn cannot be achieved without uh, strong uh, partnerships, at least that's what I believe, across the different value chains. And in order the, for these partnerships to, to happen, uh, I think there is a first group of, I call enablers or accelerators, who can really or have the power to, say, reshape the world, because this is what precisely uh, we need. And uh, by that, uh, what I mean, these enablers, uh, they are the governments, the multilaterals, the regulators, and the capital providers, which by the way, my institution, Societe Generale, is, is very much uh, part of. And I think this group uh, of global uh, players, global leaders, they have to align themselves in terms of the objectives, the strategies, the action, and perhaps above all, um, how to measure impact, because this is really what is critical. So talking about the uh, capital providers, there are two types of them. There are the banks and there are the investors. And as much as uh, why, I, why I mean that this group of people, this group of institutions is really part of the enablers, as much as governments have the capacity to legislate as much as regulators have the capacity to coerce, uh, capital providers have the power to direct financial flows uh, towards sustainable ends. And uh, among the capital providers, the sense of partnership is really crucial. We need uh, to speak the same language. Uh, we need to align ourselves on tangible and actionable uh, frameworks. So, on one hand, it's not time anymore for uh, greenwashing because it's time for action and it's time for impact. A key example is what we at Societe Generale, we have done in 2018, which is to sign with five uh, major banks, the Katowice commitment, which is a pledge to develop an open source methodology to ensure our activities are in line with the goals of the Paris Agreement. Or very recently, in April 2021, we joined uh, a total of 45 international banks in the Net Zero Banking Alliance, uh, which you know, aims to align our lending and investment portfolios to zero net emission 
by 2050. And these are very big steps forward in having a unified, uh, more harmonious approach to what sustainability really means in practice in the financial sector. Amazing. Thank you so much, Richard. So uh, I think Robin has called out innovation. I, I, we've heard from him on some of the innovation at Arganciel. I would like to hear from my other panelists, Sina, Mazin, and also Richard, on uh, how innovation in partnership is a bringing value. And from finance and technology perspective, I can stay with you, Richard, to cover that and then give it, turn it over to Sina and Mazin. And Sure. I mean, in your question, I, I, I'm the banker, so I will, I will go into the financing uh, and I will develop more the financing part of it because obviously it's my passion. Uh, from a financing perspective, there are conceptually different ways to look at, uh, at sustainability. What has and is occurring as we speak is the capacity for both financial institutions and investors to segregate between what is sustainable and what is not in order, for instance, to, uh, at the extreme, exit some of the uh, critically non-sustainable areas. And one example that comes to mind is the fact that my institution uh, exited the financing of coal-based uh, industries. But as much as that example is a clear-cut decision, uh, many, if not all, sectors or companies uh, are not either 100% sustainable or 100% non-sustainable. Uh, many of them, if not all of them, have the capacity to uh, uh, shift their um, uh, business models and their uh, processes. And in that sense, uh, uh, it, is, uh, it, it is really uh, crucial that uh, we uh, uh, help uh, those uh, uh, companies, those institutions uh, in their business models. So the question then becomes, how financial institutions can encourage uh, sustainability. And I do believe that uh, the response or one of the key response really lies into uh, uh, the cost of funds and how you can innovate around the cost of funds for sustainability. There are more and more uh, the so-called green loans or green bonds whereby a fraction even though at the moment still a, a small fraction of the cost of financing uh, is indexed on the achievement of sustainability goals such as uh, SDGs. But however, I'm convinced that uh, there, is going, uh, or there is a need as times go by and the gap with the SDGs remains or even increases, uh, there is going to be a need uh, for a shift. In fact, even perhaps a shock. And that shock will come through the risk return paradigm, which is the paradigm that both banks and uh, investors uh, uh, look at when they decide to finance or they decide to, uh, uh, to invest. So my belief is that innovation will come for the financial sector, for financing activities and investment activities by embedding more strongly, more explicitly sustainability criteria in the assessment of the risk of the financing or of uh, the investment. And this is where the partnership with a common goal is the only way forward, because not one financial institution uh, can go it alone or can go it with its own methodology or with its own set of data. Thank you so much. Sina, your thought on innovation in partnership, please. Yes. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll... Divided into two, two points of views. First, the conceptual understanding. At FRA, we really understand, especially after COVID, uh, and we have accordingly issued a, a policy paper. It's called Institutionalizing Sustainability via uh, Digitization and Digital Transformation. And that's the message that we are getting out there for the private sector and different constituents uh, in the ecosystem is that part and parcel of sustainability practices is to adopt digital transformation, uh, embrace change. And part of what, what, what we're trying to do is provide the leeway or the sandbox approach to, to, for innovators and disruptors within the market to take their time to come up with new innovation, new ideas, new approaches. Uh, for example, we've only uh, talked about uh, regulating FinTech is only very recently after it has been operating for a while. 
and this approach is, is, is always encouraged and has always encouraged the, the, the progress of uh, different kinds of innovation, especially when they are in the incubation phase and stage. Uh, that's an approach that we are uh, uh, after or uh, adhering to. Another uh, thing that I think is very, very important, is especially when it comes to uh, uh, more uh, digging deeper into sustainable finance practices and how to encourage the private sector. And as I said before, private, uh, uh, as a public institution, it's our role through partnerships, strategic partnership, to bring in the know-how, whether uh, digitization or technology, and introduce it to local markets. And this is the case when it comes to integrating climate change risk models in different markets. And we are now working through a partnership with the Insurance Federation in Egypt, and the Arab Insurance Federation on a region level with a number of international uh, reinsurance companies to create uh, models, uh, technological models that uh, project and uh, price uh, insurance premiums uh, on a local level, taking into consideration uh, local conditions. These kind of technologies and know-how is something new that we are trying to introduce uh, to facilitate, facilitate sustainable finance. Accordingly, you can see the link between partnership uh, that provide us access to knowledge, to the know-how, to the, to the software itself on how we can use it and uh, teach through capacity building and via uh, support from the private sector, international uh, trendsetters, how to introduce it locally to the public sector and to the private sector at large. Thank Thanks you. a lot, Sina. You're welcome. So I would like to give two minutes uh, to, uh, to uh, Robin and Mazin uh, on what are your thoughts on innovation in partnership? So Mazin, you can cover that and then I'm going to hear from Robin too. Briefly, please. Yes, thank you very much, Willa, and brief. Uh, well, actually, we realize the importance of uh, technology and uh, innovation uh, uh, in our market. Uh, we, we, we have in our plan, uh, we have already introduced a new trading system, new electronic board class trading system. Uh, and also we have introduced uh, uh, a, 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 an, an XBRL system, which is a disclosure system for uh, financial uh, for financial services companies and for uh, our listed companies in order to uh, uh, disseminate information uh, to the public uh, immediately. You know uh, the 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 uh, the uh, efficient market is the market that reflects the the information immediately to the to the public. So we have an XPRL, which is an extensible uh, uh, reporting language system uh, through our website. Uh, each issuer, each listed company is a financial service company, and all the, uh, the, the participants in the market could uh, disclose immediately their information to the public. Uh, and also we have uh, also uh, uh, established a, a mobile system uh, in order to, uh, uh, to, 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 to grant an access to the investors in order to, to trade through their mobile systems and to get the information from uh, the uh, stock exchange. Uh, we have uh, built uh, a strong uh, a technical infrastructure in order to uh, embrace uh, the, 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 the evolutionary uh, uh, move uh, uh, currently taking place uh, in the world towards uh, innovation, uh, technological innovation and uh, fintech and digitalization uh, of stock exchange. Uh, we have in our plan also uh, a number of uh, 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 procedures uh, in order to educate uh, public shareholding companies and listed companies with regard to uh, sustainable finance and innovation in, in, in this regard. Thank you so much, Mazin. Robin, your thoughts on innovation from finance and technology in perspective, please. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you, Gnes. Uh, just I want to add uh, one component and share one experience that uh, Arcanciel uh, we passed through. Uh, since our projects are developed in a way to ensure self-sustainability, our strategy and uh, our policies we have two dimensions, very uh, important dimensions at the beginning. The first one is to not, uh, since we operate as an organization and the social work, it doesn't mean that we don't have to have big investment in order to reply to the need. And culturally here in the area, 
they, when they think about uh, social development, it, it also, uh, we, we think about it as a charity. Or here, we can invest a lot in order to have a more sustainable model. A second uh, thing that we did adopt since the early beginning of our council is the innovation and the use of all the technology in whatever we, we do. So the first thing we have done, we did invest in our ERP as SAP, SAP and we uh, rely on it in order to have the adequate information. So in our innovative approach, we wouldn't be successful with our, uh, with the universities in Lebanon, abroad, in France, in Tunisia, uh, in uh, multiple places in the world, if we didn't have a secure uh, environment and data database in order to capitalize through it all the innovations and all the information. So this is what I wanted to share with you about. Thank you so much. My final question uh, all comes down to impact and delivery. So I would like to hear from my panelists. I would like to hear first from Richard on what challenges have you experienced uh, in measuring the success or, in, or impact in partnership and how did you address that? Well, I don't think we would have enough time here to uh, uh, list all the challenges. There are uh, there are so many, and it's really a, a uphill battle in terms of the final goals. But uh, I can I can uh, give you a, a few that I think are, are particularly uh, important for us. I think, uh, and I mentioned it uh, before, there is this. Um, harmonious methodologies that we need in order to assess uh, the needs and to uh, measure impact. Uh, and hence my uh, 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 point uh, that those who have this global reach, so the governments, the multilaterals, the regulators really have to partner up more than what they're doing today. One example that comes to mind is, for instance, this uh, framework that the European Union has come up with, uh, which they call the taxonomy, uh, which is a big step forward because that means that there will be a common uh, set of objectives and actions within the EU countries. But I think we can go even beyond that by having a global reach because this is the most complex global issue that we have and it needs uh, a, a, global, a global solution. And hopefully we can do much better than the other global crisis we just went through, which is which is COVID, uh, we, we really need global partnerships. Another big uh, issue, uh, I think, is the greenwashing. Uh, I know I've been mentioning that also before, but I think this has, we are reaching a time where greenwashing is actually counterproductive to the cause itself. So when it comes to building partnerships, we need to make sure that we have partners who really mean business, between brackets, who really mean uh, impact. Uh, and therefore, we all uh, uh, jointly need to make sure that we get rid of this communication tool that we see uh, in, in sustainability. And the last one I want to mention, it's not necessarily a challenge. I think it's a missed opportunity at the moment. I think there are... Uh, huge progress and huge opportunities within data. Data science has moved forward so much that it allows us to uh, fast track uh, uh, and, and really uh, measure uh, those impacts in a more efficient way. And I think we haven't really harnessed the power of, of data management and data science to the benefit of sustainability and, and SDGs. And I think that's an area we really need to, to develop. Thank you so much, uh, Richard. Sina, so just also in one minute, how do you think we can define and measure success in partnership? I think um, specifically or scientifically, scientifically speaking about measuring impact of partnership is not, has not been evolving uh, enough uh, in the region, I think. It's one of the major problems that we have, but again, 
uh, through strategic partnerships, even this can be remedied. There is institutions that are uh, technically uh, prepared for impact assessments, different kind of impact assessments on, on the one hand. Another is, I really always say, it's about uh, how do you manage partnership from the beginning? How do you select the partner? How you go through day-to-day uh, -day activities with partners, how to make sure that agreements have, is being done in the best valuable way through a monitoring evaluation system that is persistent throughout the, the duration of a partnership. All of these can help at least to maximize the impact of a part partnership on a short term or a medium term in light of missing more data, uh, KPIs, and uh, and more substantial uh, indicators that can really provide us with what is required on a longer term uh, on partnership and, the, uh, and data. Uh, that's it. For me. Thank you, Sina. Mazen, any final word as well on measurement of uh, the success of partnership? Yes, thank you. Uh, well, actually, uh, I think one of the major challenges that we faced is the lack of education and disengagement with regard to uh, to sustainability and uh, SDG, uh, and the resistance a lot in light of the current circumstances, and also the uncertainty that we're passing through uh, in light of the COVID-19 and the pandemic repercussions. So uh, I think uh, we have, first of all, uh, to build a strong partnership with the stakeholders, with the partners, and uh, this partnership should be based on uh, 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 guiding rather di than directing, and also to uh, to have mutual understanding uh, uh, of the benefits uh, of the application of, of these standards and, and principles. Uh, so building capacity also is a necessity, uh, training, education, uh, we at the Stock Exchange, we are measuring our success based on uh, the, uh, the number of uh, activities that we are holding in order to educate the, 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 our main stakeholders, uh, the listed companies. And also, we, have very, we should have very strong uh, relationship and partnership with the regulators. And, and also, we're building on our... Uh, a partnership with the international institutions, as I said, uh, mainly the UN uh, Global Compact. Uh, so a number of listed companies that are in compliance with the sustainability uh, 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 principles are one of the our KPIs, actually, uh, with regard to measuring this, our success in, uh, in, in, in building the capacity building and uh, also moving towards compliance uh, uh, with, with the standards and principles of SDG and uh, sustainability. Thank you so much, Mazen. Final one minute to Robin on what you'd like to say on success and the measurement of success in the partnership. Thank you. Thank you, Grace. Uh, I totally agree with uh, all our friends, with uh, Sina, Richard, Mazen, uh, about uh, what they talk about. I want to add just two dimensions uh, concerning the legal limitation that uh, we were facing uh, throughout our process. And it's a little bit difficult throughout the difficult, uh, an environment where you don't have a uh, legal, uh, clear legal uh, environment to operate uh, uh, in a partnership where uh, each party doesn't know uh, what are the obligations and you cannot define it uh, legally. Uh, second thing uh, is in order to succeed all what was talked about, we have to go through an approach uh, a bottom-up uh, approach in order to, to start from the need, from the field, and not to impose, especially in a partnership in a, need, in a region. So in order to see the real needs in every country, in every culture, definitely the culture is difficult in each country, but there is a need who is uh, there in the country. So we have to build on the need in a bottom-up uh, approach and in that we can succeed the partnership and we can measure it. And the measurement of the partnership, the best thing is we have the sustainability of the economical model 
that pertains throughout the years. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, really, I would like to thank all my panelists for sharing great and actionable uh, insights on creating value for partnership. I think I've heard and uh, from public sector as well as from private uh, sector on what are the enablers uh, to achieve more and more impactful partnership. I think we all agreed on having strong partnership in place on having the right enablers and accelerators to achieve and attain common goals, common KPIs. Uh, we need a strong international and diversified multi-stakeholders who have a clear definition of accountability, of roles and responsibilities, optimizing the involvement of, of each. And I'd like also what I've heard on having a tactical approaches and framework in, in place. I've also heard from the financial uh, a sector as well on the importance of thinking on the right investments and right uh, index on sustainability and a proper assessment of risk on where the funds needs to be placed and how. Uh, so I think uh, measuring success is important and in order to shape the world at the end of the day, uh, partnership is about shaping the world. We can do it without working together, public, private partnership, uh, regulators, uh, government, civil society, foundations, in order to achieve with inclusiveness and interconnectedness a new world and a better future. Thank you so much. I would like to thank Alexandra, the entire UN Global team, for giving us this opportunity. Thank you all. Thank you.